Welcome to G Jimmy Bullet TV. I'm adding the Jimmy because there's other Bullet TVs out there. So I thought a little tweak of the branding there to um, get me on my way to becoming a YouTube sensation. As I said at the start, I, I didn't have overly grand ambitions. I was just hoping to be um, about as good and successful as just someone who'd video their cat doing nothing particular. Um, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, obviously, right, right up there is a cat falling off something. Um, I can't hope to, to reach those dizzy heights yet, but I'm still here and that says something. And I've even made a sign. So, you know, branding and stuff. I'm uh, getting a bit more professional. Gonna start today's show with one of my songs which is um, called I Never Ever Want To Be Clothed by Sports Direct. You can shout at my hand my shoes and point to my tash and say Hitler You can go for at my scarf and call me a hipster and say I look like Howard Moon But there's one thing I've got to say cause it's written in my DNA I never ever want to be close by sports direct I just don't like that kind of plan Generic sports radio Shouted onions to me, I wasn't sure what you meant until I worked out that you were alluding to the fact I might look a bit French because of my striped top. To be quite honest with you though, it was more annoying than funny. Made me wonder, how come you get to get away with that? There's one thing I've got to say. Music roundup, music roundup, but up, but up, but up, but up. Music roundup, music roundup, but up, but up, but up, but up. In this week's music roundup, I was going to have a bit of a dilemma because on Saturday there are two really good gigs. But um, the first one being Pog and the Monochrome set at um, the Hope and Ruin, but that sold out. So unless you're going to that already, hard luck. Um, so instead of that, go along to the West Hill Hall to see Darren Heyman, supported by Suburban Death Twitch, um, starting at eight o'clock. It costs some money, I don't know how much, but I'm sure it'd be worth it. Um, be there or be square. The next bit you're gonna see is going to be an interview with Paul from POG and Matt from The Brighton Strangler about a fantastic gig that you should all come, come and see. So um, stay tuned. <laughs> Hello. Right, yeah, I'm going to start. So this is a Jimmy Bullet TV interview from the Mitre Pub in Brighton, and I have with me Matt over here and Paul. Matt from Brighton Strangler and Paul from Pog and various other things. 
Um, so let's start with Matt, because this is the gig you're putting on. Can you tell Jeez, everybody yes. the details yeah. and, yeah, that'd be better. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, move over. Really nice. get, get comfortable. Let's get um, yeah, well, we're playing at the latest bar, which uh, used to be old comedia for people who know it, uh, down Manchester Street. Uh, it did, yeah, many years ago. And um, it's going to be on the 25th, Sunday the 25th of November, so a couple of weeks' time, and doors open 7 o'clock. And how much do people have to pay to go? Yeah, it's going to cost a fiver. Um, we're being charged for the hire of the, of the place, so you know we've got to. I think a fiver for three board. bands is quite good because there is a third band on the bill, and that's Jimmy and the Worn Out Shoes. Worn out shoes. You might have heard yeah. of them, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> um, so Brighton Strangler are headlining this one. That's what right. would people uh, expect from a Brighton Strangler set? Well. The way I describe ourselves is, is indie punk, um, but with a poppy edge, and we don't take ourselves too seriously. Um, so it has to be fun. Um, yeah, we've got some good three minute songs, we've got some which are a bit longer, four minutes as well. But yeah, I think they've all got a, a, a catchy poppy edge to them. And what kind of musical references would you say? Yeah, I mean, what I grew up with was that whole that whole punk thing, um, and so I think I lean quite heavily on that. It's something which stays with you. And but I'd say that we've got elements of Gang of Four in there. We've got elements of Joy Division in there. We've got elements of I don't know the Strokes or the Buzzcocks, something like that. Something which is guitar led, like the Strokes in there as well. So that sort of sound. If you can sort of mix them all together and spew something out. So unlike uh, me and Paul, we got, you haven't been doing bands for that long, am I right about that? No, that's absolutely right. I mean, this is, this is my first band. Um, I st we started, um, I'd never played in the band before, I can't play any instruments either. I tried to pick up a guitar, uh, got bored with it, uh, because, I, because I'm fundamentally lazy at those things. And um, I decided I wanted to form a band. And I just met a guy in a pub, oh Nick, who I'd only met a few times, asked me if he was oh, asking everybody. And Nick said he played a guitar, so we, we got well, together. And we just, I had some ideas for tunes, so we hammered out some tunes, and um, yeah, I mean, it's grown from there. It's, it's actually taken about three years to get this point. And when we started, me and Nick, we were dreadful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely dreadful. We didn't know what we were doing. Um, didn't know how to create a song. But yeah, we stuck at it. And some of the songs we've got now are still some of those original ones that me and Nick sat down in his living room with him on his acoustic guitar and me just trying to sing something. So yeah. Cool, thank you. That sounds like a good process. What I like about um, Brighton Strangle is that whole thing about there's an assumption that uh, bands are for people of a certain age or, and a certain gender, which I guess we all are, but um, not all of Pog and not all of uh, doing the worn out shoes. And it's nice when you step outside of that and you've got people that are a bit older or just not quite what you might be expected to be in a band. So um, that's something I really like about you guys. And of course, Pog, for people who don't know who Pog, what are Pog like? How would you introduce them? Um, I would introduce them as being a folk punk band. Um, <laughs> what was it? Yeah, we, we've got um, a sort of a slightly unusual lineup in that we've got a violin, clarinet, and accordion. That needs most of the, the songs. Um, and it's, yeah, been going in different forms for about 20 years. Yeah, yeah, and you're, you, you, you're, you're the principal songwriter. Yes, yeah, or, or lyrically at least. The, the, the music tends to come from everyone. More, more so now, um, in, like with the last album, Beth and Becky and Anya, who, who play those, those instruments I mentioned, and tend to do a lot of the arranging, especially with the, like, the melody lines and everything. So I can't really take credit for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, where does the name come from, Paul? I don't really remember. Um, I remember it was a toss. In fact, you 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 were present when I was the first one because um, that that gig in Plymouth. You yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so it was a toss-up between Pog and Stick Boy. Uh, um, I think, had I have known how many people use the internet to search for bands by yeah. name, I think I would have gone for Stick Boy. Oh, At least right. something easy as a find yeah, yeah. on Google, because, yeah, Pog isn't the most easy, you know, uh, sort of searchable term for bands. No, no. Um, and you've got some other cool gigs lined up. Yes, we're up. playing with the Monaco set this right. Saturday, which is the 17th. Um, and a band called the Bitter Springs who are a lot like uh, sort of a slightly more melancholy half man half biscuit uh, and then of course um, that one with you guys and then 
beyond that, it's been really cool. We haven't done much recently uh, for, for various reasons, but um, we're doing a house gig, <laughs> which awesome. is a private event, so that's not much use. And we're playing in London with a couple of bands as well at the end of the month. So it is, it is quiet, but we're writing new songs. So, yeah, that's yeah, our, yeah, that's our. Are you presentation. building towards a more another album then? Slowly. What's your kind of uh, norm, normal cycle for recording? Now? Um, Cause you've got quite a few al- it albums done. It used to be a lot quicker. Um, we used to do. We went through a period of doing a pair of albums every other year. Um, one would be a full band one, and one would be actually, if I'm honest, songs that didn't make the album. But okay. we record them anyway. Usually, a bit more um, sort of like lo-fi. Yeah, actually, yeah. The, the, the main albums were lo-fi enough anyway. But um, uh, but yeah, it just felt like saturation, really. Um, um, you know, you, you want to be inspired by the one that you really wanted them to listen to, and then you sort of start thinking, well, actually, what's the point of just knocking up a you know yeah, a, yeah, a, a B-side album? So yeah, now we just do one every two or three years. I mean, it feels like more of an event when you've actually got one. Finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many albums have you done so far? Uh, 15. 15? 15, 15 pods. Yeah, so it always sounds like a lot until you say that's since. Actually, it's not quite. Oh, God, no, 18 years, but nearly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it is a lot, actually. It is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's never way you look at it. It looks like a lot when you look at your unsold inventory. Yeah, 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 okay, right. <laughs> then it looks like a lot. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing I always think about when I'm looking at your sort of um, past successes or, or uh, things you've done so far is all the bands that you I mean you're quite often part of bringing back old bands that are missing a guitarist or something I've seen videos with you playing various instruments to make up um, yeah that's what I'm like Patrick Fitzgerald yeah 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 that, that's sort of funny really I think what it was was just um just stumbling on people, and actually, um, Patrick, and also there was other people like Steve Lake and uh, Blight Power, and people from that sort of um, scene and generation of, of, sort of I suppose, anarcho punk um, that I used to interview when I did Fancy. And so I just kind of got to know them, and quite a few of them sort of uh, retired from music to different degrees, but you know, either due to families or uh, ill health or moving abroad in Patrick's case, and then they wanted to sort of come back. But the thing was, because of the age they were, which is like, you know, early 60s or so, it wasn't, they didn't have a readily available list of people they could fall back on, you know, to, to play instruments with them. So we just tended to kind of get these scratch bands together. And then of course, um, in, in certainly in, in Patrick's case, things started to snowball a bit. So he started to reacquaint himself with people that he'd lost touch with and then started playing with them. So it was, it was nice to kind of like, especially somebody like that, um, who I, you know, got so much from his music, to, to the extent where, had I not listened to his records when I did, I would have either not played at all, or things would have been, you know, come out very different. Because, because um, the thing with his music was it was so accessible and so easy. So you could tell it was doing chords because there was nothing else. There were no yeah, drums yeah. to distract So that. you can work out how to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, it, and so I picked up an acoustic guitar from, from a car boot store and just thought, yeah, I'm going to have a go at this. I'm sure and you played a p- uh, safety pin in your heart. Oh, in my heart. Yeah, yeah, when you were um, Patrick Strait. When you were on the first game. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, and um, so. From, from that point of view, it just felt like it was just you know, repaying a debt, really. Um, mm. Trying to sort of coax somebody who had lost the confidence of it and lost the, the network from playing music, just to sort of try and ease them back in, which it, it kind of did for a few years, but it's disappeared again. So yeah, that, that's how that sort that's of started to come about. Do, don't they? I know, but it seems, it, I think this time it's for good. I don't think it's going to come back and play again. Right. Just because he, he just didn't enjoy it. But, um, but yeah, so that, that's how that sort of stuff tended to come about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, it's nice, I mean, it's just nice playing with different people. And, um, so of these, obviously Patrick Fitzgerald will be up there, but who would be the your, the crown, the, the person that you're most proud that you played with or supported? Oh gosh. Um, oh, wow. Now, let's see. Um. <laughs> he's, he's trying to say Jimmy and the Worn Out Shoes. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, that's right. Get it out. Present company accepted. I mean, yeah, Patrick will be up there just because I never imagined it would happen that sort of thing. Um, uh, there's others like um, Mark from the Astronauts, um, and also, um, oh gosh, I don't know, I, I really don't. Oh, um, Carl Coughlin from the Fatima Mansions, that was, a, that was a good one. And Steve Lake from Zounds. I mean, the thing is, I think it's, look, especially like the kind of scene that we, you know, that we all got created, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, our heroes are really accessible, aren't they? Yeah, because yeah. They want well, fanzines and they, they, yeah, they sit yeah. behind a table selling cassettes at their gigs and they answer lessons when you write to them. Mm, so mm. it's not like, you know, the, the, I think the people who I 
did feel like really proud of playing with or, or, or sharing bills with have kind of become friends over the years. So it's kind of hard to sort of, sort of feel starstruck about them. Yeah, yeah, you know I, I mean? get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah no, exactly. Yeah. But there's been lots of points where I sort of think more that um, I sort of think if my 16 year old self could no, hear no, me I did that, like yeah, I'm yeah. playing these songs on stage with the person who wrote them yeah, yeah. Um, you know obviously it'd be a brilliant thing to be able to hop back in time and say you know yeah. it's going to be okay you're going to yeah, do yeah, some yeah. really fun things yeah. um, but, but like I say when, when, when you break those barriers down they just become your mates and actually that's kind of what punk should be should I mean, be yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah so I can't ask you the same question Matt at your stage in your band's career you haven't done uh, 18 albums yet whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> but um, if you could choose an act to kind of play with, apart from the one out shoes, obviously. <laughs> play with, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I think I've already mentioned the Gang of Four. Um, for me, what they did was they introduced a completely new sound and a, a stuff that they, you know, Ian Gill, Ian Gill, John Gill, could do with his, his, his guitar was absolutely astonishing. And he, and he, he would, he would just make, make noises, but in a rhythmic way, which, and then you'd have that, that, that drum beat in the back of the wood, you know, and it just kept moving along. And I just thought it was so vibrant and different. Um, and then if you, if you've seen John King dance as well, he's got wobbly legs. I don't know if you've ever seen it. That's something to behold. But for me, The Gang of Four and that first album was entertaining. It had so much space Nothing. in it, didn't it? Yeah, I, I think I would think that. Like, whereas punk was always distorted. Most punk up to that point seemed yeah. to be four to the floor. Yeah. Distorted yeah. guitars, everything driven all the way, That's and then there'd be like a bit of bass and a bit of guitar and a bit of nothing, and then uh, the lyrics really clear because yes. of that, those gaps. And, yeah, yeah. Um, right, so let's end this interview with a little advert for our gig, then, Matt. So, why should people come to our Why gig? should people go, come? Well, firstly, as you said, three bands for five pounds. That, good that bands. Free, That's free very good bands. So. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to be fun, regardless of anything else. I mean, I think all three bands have the right attitude, the right approach. None of us take our, none of us take ourselves too seriously. We want to entertain. We want to have fun. And um, yeah, just come down and have a good night. Sounds good. Yes. Thanks very much. Um, Do you want to say something? Well, no, it, it, um, obviously, with what, what Matthew just said, but also I think um, all three bands are very different to each other, even though they've got the same sort of core sort of DIY principles. I think our form presentation varies a lot, so it won't get boring. No, that's yeah. true. A bit of variety. Well, thank you very much, you two. Pleasure, Jimmy. Thank See you. you there. Bye bye.